First of all, for my short attention spanners out there, this video is not about props. We are going to get to jets within about a minute here, so bear with me. You are not going to be watching props the whole time. However, I am going to talk about them real quick because we're going to be talking about a topic that for a very long time is pretty much just associated with props. Many of you may have heard the term ergonomic thrown around when you hear people talking about vehicles in War Thunder. What does that even mean? Vehicles in War Thunder aren't physical. You can't touch them or feel them at all. They're obviously digital planes. So how can they be ergonomic? Well, typically people are just talking about how easy something is to use. This type of thing mainly manifests itself with planes that turn really well or have an air spawn or it's easy to aim the guns or the guns are really good. Any one of these things really or most often a combination of two and you oftentimes get people that are tricked into thinking a plane that is kind of bad for its battle rating is actually really good and a Tom 154 is an example of one of those planes that people oftentimes tote as a very good plane for its BR despite not really having any good qualities performance wise that will actually give it any kind of edge over its competition. It really just has an air spawn and a lot of frontal, fi frontal firepower in the nose that is easy to aim because of where the guns are mounted, resulting in people getting kills very often. Other examples of this in props would be something like the entire Japanese prop tech tree really. There's of course some exceptions, but for the most part, pretty much every Japanese prop in the game with again a few exceptions are pretty over tiered and they are really too high of a BR for their own good. Why do they get there? Well it's because players perform really well in Japanese props. They have cannons, they turn very well and that's all you need for the average player to actually get some kills. What about in jets though? Do you really ever hear this term mentioned in jets? Well you may have, you may have not. Me personally I don't hear people talk about ergonomic jets that, that often. So. I'm going to tell you what, in my opinion, makes a jet ergonomic and some of your favorite planes that you think are really good and you manage to get three kills a game with, even though you really don't, aren't actually that good. Take for example, on screen, the AV-8A Harrier. This plane is battery rating 9.7 with no afterburner, it doesn't go supersonic, it's pretty much outclassed in most every flight performance metric at 9.7 BR, but yet the way jets are set up and the way jets play right now, you don't necessarily have to have extremely good flight performance in order to actually get yourself some kills. Much like a lot of players and props only need a plane that has really good cannons that are easy to use and really good turn time to get their kills, in jets really all you need is some really good missiles and a lot of countermeasures. The AV-8 pretty much embodies this perfectly. The flight performance of this thing at 9.7 is bad to average and the only thing that is pretty normal for this plane at 9.7 is its acceleration. But that's only because it's at 9.7 and all the planes have afterburners pretty much. Yes, the acceleration is very impressive for a plane that doesn't have an afterburner. But again, at 9.7 pretty much everything does and they're going to be accelerating just as quickly as you are. After that, pretty much everything about this plane is just mid. The top speed is non-existent, everything is faster than you, you don't turn very well, you might turn well at like one particular speed window of 100 km an hour, but after that this thing's pretty much a complete brick. But you know what, all of that is pretty much completely irrelevant if you can just sling two super under-tiered missiles at planes that don't even have flares. And on the flip side, you have enough flares to flare away every single missile that is fired by the enemy team by yourself. You can see me in these clips here just diving down at the start of the game shooting these attackers that don't have any flares or any kind of way to reliably defeat the A9G and it's just working for me. Even though it really shouldn't be, it is. Because of this, you might be misled into thinking that this plane is really good. You get a lot of kills with it, your KD is really high and you think just overall it is a very above average plane when in reality it's just not. A 9.7 is honestly probably the worst one there is, except for the fact that you get your two AIM 9Gs. So you could say that this jet is ergonomic. It's easy to use because the missiles pretty much do all of the work for you 
and when it comes to dodging incoming fire, the flares half the time are going to do all the work for you as well. And of course there's always situations like on screen here where I'm able to somehow catch up and keep up with these MiG-21s and T-2s and all these various other supersonic planes that are caught at a bad time in a bad position that one-on-one -on -one or any scenario in which they can actually deal with me on their own, I would probably lose very, very nastily. And again, we have the T2 coming in here, and he almost kills me, but he's not going to. He's on my six now. He should have me dead to rights. The T2 is a plane that just miles, miles ahead of the AV-8 as far as performance goes, and he has a Vulcan on top of that, which is gonna make it very hard for me to dodge his incoming shots. However, unfortunately, there is just, uh, well, a bad day for this player right here as far as on the sticks and his aiming isn't going to actually get to me here. We do manage to make him overshoot which is something that you can do pretty easily on a plane that is about 300 kilometers on average slower than whatever it is behind you and now I'm at least safe and possibly have a chance at getting some kills. The correct thing to do of course would be to pull off and get some distance between him and me uh, unfortunately the T2s are just tunnel visioned and I'm able to shoot another one down. Again, absolutely no credit to the plane here. 100% the enemy players are doing misplays. They're doing everything wrong, basically, and allowing me to shoot them. They have to let me kill them in the Harrier. And of course, this is obviously going to happen in RRB, but again, not to the credit of the Harrier. Basically, same story here on this last T2. He has allowed the teammate on my team to overshoot. He goes for a gunshot, but he's completely forgotten about my existence. On top of that, he's also critically damaged, so that might have something to do with it, but his afterburner is still on. I whiff some shots here, but ultimately get another T2 kill, which again, just shouldn't happen. And there's a lot of planes that kind of fit into the category of the AV-8A. Uh, the SU-25, the A-10, most all of the premiums, honestly, at the jet tier that carry really good missiles are somewhat gimped by the flight performance and completely carried by the missiles. At top tier, which I think most of you can relate to, the most blistering example of an ergonomic top tier jet is the Harrier GR7. This plane on paper should be absolute dog water at 11.3 BR. It's probably 400 kilometers an hour slower than everything on average as far as like what speeds you're actually going to be playing at in the battle. Not necessarily what it can do. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same boat as the AV-8A. It turns really well at a very particular speed window and after that it starts to kind of just become a brick. You are going to be out turning a lot of people simply just because you're going that much slower than them, not because your plane actually turns better. If you are 200 to 300 kilometers an hour slower than somebody, of course your turning radius is going to go inside of theirs because they're just going to go shooting out in front of you regardless of how much AOA they're actually pulling. Don't get yourself tricked into thinking this equals really good turn rate. I think this plane is pretty much a perfect example when it comes to ergonomics at the jet level. You get terrible flight performance relative to the battle rating, but you get a really, really good kit and unlimited countermeasures. You will never run out of countermeasures with this thing, and therefore, you might notice that a lot of people are going to have a really hard time killing you. You get excellent weaponry in the form of four 9Ls and arguably the best gun in the game. It's kind of point and click when it comes to velocity when you're using the ground targets belt. Uh, there's basically no aiming required, no leading that is. Uh, of course I'm exaggerating, but it's just one of those planes that shouldn't work as well as it does. But unfortunately, the reality of a top tier game, it just does and you're going to get your kills within and it's honestly pretty good fun. That is of course again not to be confused with a good vehicle. That's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys found the topic somewhat interesting at least. Let me know in the comments down below and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you later.